Hi there. Welcome to Game Score Fanfare. Hey, I just noticed that rhymes. I want to share with you something cool about one of my favorite game soundtracks of recent years, Bravely Default. I wouldn't blame you for thinking the music playing in the background right now is the main theme of the game, but it's not. It's actually just a random town theme. The actual main theme of Bravely Default is this. Or at least it's one of them. This tune pops up everywhere throughout the game, most notably in the overworld map music. And also the asterisk boss battles, which give you new jobs. I feel it's necessary at this point to take a step back for those who are unacquainted with the game. Bravely Default is a JRPG that has its roots in old school Final Fantasy. It borrows mechanics such as the job system used in Final Fantasies 3, 5 and Tactics, which allows characters to swap and combine classes on the fly. It also shares common story elements such as crystals and the four warriors of light who are tasked with saving the world, all of which has its roots in the first Final Fantasy game. The four warriors of light in Bravely Default of course each have their own theme music, but in this case each theme is carried by a unique instrument solo that represents the character. So the shepherd boy Tiz has a folky tin whistle in his theme, You Are My Hope. Agnes's theme, Wind's Course, features a violin, a traditional elegant instrument perfect for Her Holiness the Pope. The spunky, hot-headed Edia has a soprano saxophone in her theme, Baby Bird. And finally, my personal favourite, Love's Vagrant, the theme for the debonair ladies' man ring bell which has an accordion in it. Each instrument was thoughtfully chosen to represent the character, but they have the added effect of making the tunes memorable and stand out among all the huge melodies on the soundtrack. Usually character themes underscore moments of important plot development, but in Bravely Default, they're instead used in battles. When each character reaches a certain requirement, for instance, kill 10 enemies, they gain a special attack option, which when selected, changes the battle music to that character's theme. The special attacks not only dish out a huge amount of damage or healing, but they also provide buffs to the entire party, which last until the song ends and it returns to the normal battle music, which is about 90 seconds. However, if you can use another character's special attack while the new music is still playing, the buffs will stack and the 90 seconds starts over again. Enough! This is a tactic that you will need to use a lot just to see the other end of some boss fights dealing massive damage, stacking buffs and keeping them for as long as possible, essentially superpowering your party. I love that they use the music to tell the player how long the buffs last, rather than just the timer counting down. It's not a new idea by any means, music has been used to indicate enhanced power states at least since the superstar in the original Super Mario Bros. But having to balance the special attacks and timing them with the music, I think it's a cool evolution of that idea. 
This makes for an excellent moment in the final battle of the game. Spoilers here, obviously. The final boss theme is called The Serpent That Devours the Horizon. It's an epic orchestra meets rock track spanning multiple parts, with strings and choirs and brass sections and shredding guitars, perfect listening for the looming apocalypse. It also acts as a kind of remix of the entire game's soundtrack, referencing many themes used throughout the game, one of which being the main theme of the game which I mentioned earlier. This is the same tune that plays when you're exploring the world of Luxendark, so already it feels like this is part of your journey and that it's coming to an end. But this is also the tune used in boss battles, so at the same time it's encouraging you to persevere and beat this final boss. You can do it because you've already done it so many times before. As the battle rages on, things begin to look grim for the party, but you keep powering through. Your spirits are low as you enter the fifth and final stage of this incredibly lengthy battle. But as you're getting ready to give that one last push and finish it off, the music begins to amp up and then it does this. This medley of the character themes is immediately followed up with a reprise of the main theme, and it even goes on to reference the Victory Fanfare music. What the composer Revo is doing here, who by the way is this man with the luxurious hair killing it on the accordion, is using the emotional associations we have with the music to empower us. The four character themes are the music that plays when the party is at its absolute strongest stacked with buffs and dealing massive damage. Revo spends the entire game setting up this connection of power to the music, by continually referencing it in battles throughout the game. And then at the most climactic moment, just as you begin to grow weary and lose confidence, he taps into that power and inspires you to finish it off. And it works! You actually feel it when it happens, it's a really empowering moment. And then that tiny reference to the Victory fanfare is just teasing you with the end in sight. Victory is so close, you can almost hear it. A great final boss theme should feel like a culmination of the entire game that preceded it. And I think Revo is the one that achieves this in Bravely Default, by referencing moments throughout the game and raising their levels to new heights and it makes for one of the most invigorating and empowering pieces of music that I've ever come across in a game. Thank you for watching. There's just a couple of people that I want to acknowledge for helping make this video possible. First up is 8-Bit Music Theory, who provided all the transcriptions you saw. His channel is one of my favourites at the moment, especially his four-part series on the music in Breath of the Wild. Go check him out. Next is Sandara, the artist who made the characters playing their own instruments. She has a lot of cool fantasy stuff on her deviant art, which I have linked in the description. And finally, my lovely patrons, in particular Chris Chapman, Mike TK, and Nanalu. All your support means a lot to me. Thank you.